<coughs> Alrighty, hello, hello, sound check, time check, I guess it's 7 p.m. Hello, let's check the sound, check hello, yes, great, great, great. Hey, good evening, everybody, so glad to have you with me this evening for another RV Q&A, <clears throat> live stream chat, uh, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, and some RVing stuff, too. Uh, I've been working hard on the uh, old truck camper this week. And so, uh, as always, I'll drag my feet for a few minutes. And then uh, we'll chat and say hey to those that are in the stream. And, wow, it's, like, really weird. I had, like, eight people connected. <laughs> and as soon as I started the stream, boom, it dropped to, like, two. What? Okay. Anyway, uh, Food Porn Chef, hey, yes, uh, Dad's fine. Henri as ever. Uh, right back to being Henri. I guess he's actually been able to get out to the gym now. Uh, he, ever since his heart surgery many years ago, uh, he, you know, part of his rehabilitation recovery from the heart surgery was some exercise. And so he started going to the gym. And, um, you know, he was doing pretty good there for a long time. But then COVID hit. And, of course, they closed the gym. And, yeah, so I think that partially had something to do with, uh, you know, him falling and breaking a hip. Hello, Tom Downey. Great to have you in. I know that we have George, a, also known as Dad. I, hi, Dad. Hi, George. Is in. Richard Kirby, who is the new owner of Rusty, who is in with us tonight from the Caribbean somewhere. The monkey is on a cruise. I bet your wife is just happy as heck with you, Rich. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to have you here. And John is in from Michigan. Hi, John. Uh, thank you for watching the uh, premiere of the Truck Camper. Uh, I'm excited about it. Um, surely looking for some suggestions for some names. Um, I've been calling it the Spaceship. and so, uh, But I don't know if that one will stick. And so I would appreciate your suggestions. Uh, in the uh, chat window or in the comments of this video um, if you're watching it after the fact and uh, yeah so uh, make a suggestion on what you think we should call it um, but yeah I've had a lot of fun with it so far but I'll tell you what man the wind has been blowing here like 50 miles an hour today it was something else and I was outside working and I've broken my sunglasses and so I was relegated to wearing a pair of regular glasses and Oh my gosh, my eyes are so crusty from all the dirt and stuff that was flying in the air. So, yeah, it's uh, it's coming on to winter. It's supposed to be 19 degrees overnight tonight. So, yeah, we're finally getting chilly. Uh, let's see, it looks like uh, Lola's in. Hi, Lola, and thank you so much for your very generous offer. Um, I'm still considering it <laughs> because I'll be honest with you. Um, it's been really hard to find a long box pickups. Uh, there are all these damn quad cab short boxes, and that's not what I want. I want, I want the, what do they call it, the crew cab maybe? No, not the crew cab, but it's like that has the extra bench seat, and uh, then a long box. Four-wheel drive, obviously. And my current pickup, the one I have now, is just a two-wheel drive, but it's just a junk hauler, really. So, yeah, um... I've been kind of uh, searching for a pickup of some sort, um, not particular to brand. Uh, it, from my research, though, I can tell you what, Ford is about 10% uh, more expensive than uh, GM and Chevy. Uh, the Dodges um, are kind of in between those two, so it's really weird. But yeah, those Fords are really expensive. I don't think I want a diesel. Now, if I could get a diesel for the right price, I might. But I'd be just as happy with uh, with a gasser. So, yeah, the search for a truck continues. Lola, yeah, thanks again. And uh, Food Porn Chef, 12 volts with 1,200 watts of solar and two lithium batteries of 200 amp hours. Or 24 volts, 1,200 watts with 24 volt batteries with 200 amp hours, which is better. Thanks, my Mr. Abby, <laughs> dear Abby. Well, 
you know, I'll just say right now that um, I don't think you're going to find that there's a whole lot of difference there. I think where you're going to find the major difference is when you're stepping the voltage up or you need more wattage. Okay, I should say not voltage, but more wattage. So you start getting into some of these bigger systems, you know, three, four, five, six thousand watt inverter systems, then 24 volts and actually 48 volts. And 48 volts is really common on uh, ships, on, um, not ships, uh, you know, like sailboats, what are they, watercraft? I don't know what you would call them, uh, pleasure vehicles, pleasure watercraft or whatever. Uh, so I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference if you go 12 or 24 volts, Food Porn Chef. Um, I am going to snoop on that a little bit, though. Come back next week and I'll uh, give you my uh, opinion. And remember, it costs you nothing and it's probably worth that. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, let's see here. Um, oh, George, George uh, a.k.a. Dad, about the truck camper. I found American-made stainless steel wrapped hoses for the propane tanks at home. I'll send you a link. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, the propane in this in, uh, is all copper. So all the propane uh, lines are copper. And, uh, you know, I guess that's cool. Uh, you know, I haven't... I uh, went through and I did... Um, you know, the, here's the way it'll work. I'll just kind of let you know. I'll be doing one video on Sunday nights, a premiere style. And if you'd like, and you could say yay or nay over in the comments, I can, I can tag that up with a live stream. And I would do a short live stream, say 10, 15, 20 minutes. We'll talk about the project or what, what I did in that particular video. Uh, more over than you would in, say, like the normal chat window. Because I know when I watch premieres, and this is the downside of a premiere type video to me, um, it's hard to watch the chat window and watch the video at the same time and pay attention. Uh, my videos tend to have a lot of information in them. And uh, so, uh, and I find that, you know, I watch uh, Laura Camp. She's a maker. You know, there are these folks that take, and Laura is really good at upcycling. So she takes junk and makes really cool stuff out of it. Uh, and so she premieres on Sunday morning, 7 Mountain Time, AM Mountain Time. She's in Cologne, Germany. And uh, I really dig her channel. She's really very talented, very, you know, I just really like it. But I can't watch her chat and then watch and watch the video at the same time. I don't, I can't split my attention to that because I just don't seem to enjoy the video as much. So I kind of begrudgingly do the premieres. It's a great way to interact with folks. But if you'd like, I would do a live stream after that video in, let's say, 10 or 15 minutes. And maybe I'll try one for a couple of weeks and see how it works for folks. But if that's something you're interested in, then uh, say yay or nay over in the comments. And also let me know where you're watching from tonight. We got Tim Cuneo from Georgia. Hello, Tim. Uh, John Besmick. Super cab. Thank you, John. Yes. Uh, Tom Downey, 75 mile an hour winds. A tr the wind blew a truck over the depiction past bridge. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a wild storm that's dropping in here. We were 64 degrees Monday. We were 41 today. I think it dropped 23 degrees in a, in, you know, from one day to the next. But that's what you get when you live at altitude. Tom Downey, cost of components plus. Okay, Tom. Um, I don't know if I'm following you there. You mean what I'm putting into the uh, truck camper or uh, Food Porn Chef's uh, solar system? Clarify, please. Uh, Rick C., uh, RV warranty or not on a new motorhome? On a new one, you'll get a factory warranty. They're usually 12 months. Then you're going to pay... A certain amount of money for some kind of a warranty now on a new RV depending upon the cost of the RV they can be anywhere from five to fifteen thousand dollars it depends on how much high-tech really expensive gear you have inside of that RV as to how much that warranty will be okay 
Now, the thing about those warranties is if it's on the RV, that is on the house part of the RV alone. Okay? House part of the RV alone. Does not count the rolling chassis if we're talking about a motorhome. Now, if it's like a towable, then it covers the whole rig usually. But just to be clear, if it's a, if it's a motorized vehicle, Class A, Class C, that warranty that you buy for the motorhome, for the RV, will only cover the coach itself, not the rolling chassis. You typically have to have a different maintenance agreement in place for the rolling chassis. Now, there are some that cover both, but they're hella expensive. All right. I can't tell you for sure what would be the best, but I can tell you what my strategy was. I could have gotten a warranty, <clears throat> excuse me, on mine when I bought it for $11,000. Okay, that was a lot of money back in 2011 when I bought Rusty. And I just couldn't see myself paying that. Right? I mean, I just said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5000 that 11000 and just put it away in a rainy day fund and not touch it. Put it in an interest-bearing account. That's my warranty. And then as time goes on, or if I have a few more coins in my pocket in, on a particular year, then I'll throw a little bit more money in there. Additionally, what I did with my rig, with it being as old as it was, is I had worked up a budget every year to do around somewhere between two and four, maybe $5,000 worth of improvements. So like one year I did tires. The next year I did, well, actually um, solar, right? Well, let's see. Yeah, I did solar first because that was another 2500 I did the roof. That cost about twelve hundred. So in twenty eighteen, let's say I put about thirty eight hundred into the RV in in maintenance, okay, uh, so on and so forth. And so that's kind of how I managed my older rig. So I wish I could say for sure, yay or nay on the warranties. I think everybody's situation is different, but definitely, if it's you know reasonably priced. Now keep in mind that. Those RV refrigerators can be twelve to fifteen, sixteen hundred bucks. Uh, other things, microwaves are expensive. You know, all of the components, um, you know, stuff like that. The stuff that's expensive, um, you know, uh, is going to be the equipment, like the the fridge, the range, the microwaves, the water heaters. Heating systems, depending upon the heat, you know, uh, those sorts of things. And so, um, you know, if... Uh, and then I think the other thing you should probably do is, for your rig, go to uh, the web and just look at uh, uh, repairs or maintenance costs and warranty uh, issues with that particular model and see how many really difficult ones there are. That could probably help you. I think I saw you comment here. Oh, okay. So Rick C says, it did cover the chassis seven years or 70,000, and it's about 5,000. Okay, that's actually not bad. And so it might be worth it. Read the fine print though. Make sure that you understand exactly what it's covering. Now, if it, with it covering the chassis, then you're talking engines and transmissions and rear ends and those sorts of things. Now, I'll tell you something else that's really valuable is, of course, roadside assistance is a must-have, okay? Now, I personally went with Good Sam. FMCA has a great plan. There's others out there. Uh, you know, uh, as far as roadside assistance goes, it's Fords and Chevys, right? I mean, it's the same argument. I say it's Fords and Chevys. It could be Dodges and GMCs, but, you know, everybody has their opinion about what's the best. So... Yeah, I think 5000 that sounds like a pro what's the cost to, what's the value of the RV? Uh, the you know, what's the value of your rig if you don't mind sharing that. So Justin, I'll come back to Rick as soon as he answers that question. Uh, Justin Tehe. Hi Justin, uh, you're a new uh, face and happy to have you here tonight. Would I recommend the Chinese diesel heaters? If you upgrade the fuel lines, 
and add a plate turret base and maybe muffler. You know, um, some of the cheap Chinese diesel heaters are pretty good. All right. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I watch these. I watch some other nomads. They're not nomads anymore because a lot of the nomads that I used to watch are transitioning into, uh, you know, more of a sticks and bricks or a part-time thing like a streaming life. Um, now they're a dreaming life. They they were a full-time couple. They're down in Arizona that retired young and uh, were traveling around in an Airstream and then uh, got a little homestead out there west of Benson, kind of uh, in the Arizona desert. And then I watched uh, a couple channels, uh, Van Wives, uh, a couple young gals that uh, travel in a Freightliner uh, van, and they have a diesel heater, and they've had to work on it a couple times. I don't remember the brand of it, though. But you might go check out the Van Wives, uh, V-A-N-W-I-V-E-S, W-I-V-E-S. They have several videos on their channel about their diesel heater and about them doing maintenance on it. The maintenance doesn't look all that difficult. You know, you're going to have to change fuel filters, uh, those sorts of things. So uh, uh, I think they work. Um, I'm actually considering one for my truck camper if I can't get the furnace to run in the, tr the truck camper. Um, more about that in a minute. Uh, Food Port Chef says, Super Crew cab with bucket seat. Yeah, the Super Crew, Super Crew for sure. Uh, and Or the Super Cab, yeah, Super Cab. But the console, I want that center console widget, you know, that because I uh, like to drive with my this elbow sitting on something. So I have the center console in my car. And then in Rusty the RV, the captain's chair arms fold down, and so I could rest my elbows on that. And that's, I mean, that's the way I like to drive. So, yeah, good call. George, a.k.a. Dad, MV Sturgis, Inc., one quarter inch RV stainless steel overbraid pigtail propane hose by one quarter MPT brand, MV Sturgis. Okay, and that's on Amazon, right, George? Yeah, okay, you see it there. I read, read the rest of your comments. Okay. Okay, uh, Ronald Lee. Hi, Ron. Great to have you back. Last time I recommended adding a fan to a Norcold 1200 outside by the vent. I'm still having the pro a problem with the temp dropping when I'm driving on uh, liquid gas, on propane. Temp is good when the coach is parked on liquid gas or AC. Did you put, so uh, the problem with, I, okay, the first thing I wanna ask is, 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 it, is your fridge mounted in a slide or is it on a solid wall and does it vent out the top of the slide or does it vent out through the roof? Uh, let me know on that, Ron. Rick C, 143. Okay, five grand on 143 is pretty good, but I would read the fine print and make sure that, you know, that they don't exclude things. Um, you know, like, you know, that they don't exclude things. Which reminds me, I was going to mention that. The Good Sam tire protection is pretty inexpensive, and one big tire on a Class A costs you about 600 bucks maybe more now with inflation and all these things that are going on uh, with supply chain issues and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, uh, tire, tire insurance is, is cheap from Good Sam as well. And um, when I get to the truck camper on the road, I'll be buying that for the pickup. Probably through Good Sam. I've been happy with them. Um, okay, they have those as a multiple links. Great. Tom Downey, we paid cash for the new Mar, then paid payments each month to buy a new one. So far, we don't, we don't want. I'm, I'm guessing you don't want one, <laughs> or Dean, or you don't need one. Uh, I'm betting you probably don't need one. Okay, Justin. Yes, uh, Justin Tehe uh, back with uh, circling back on the Chinese diesel heater. Uh, his biggest fear is it leaking, carbon monoxide, and a potential fire. The first thing you got to have is a CO monitor, carbon monoxide monitor. All right? You have got to have one of those anytime you use any kind of heater that uses a gas-based, fuel-based, you know, heat source. Electric, no worries. But, you know, if you have a propane furnace, and most every RV in the world has a propane furnace, 
uh, you need to have a carbon monoxide detector. Okay, and in our in RVs with LP, you should have a an LP detector as well. Okay, but so yeah, you definitely want to get uh, a CO detector and leave that in your uh, rig for that. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, you know, there's um, I I don't have any firsthand experience. I'm just starting. Uh, I'm just starting to do research on the furnace and see if I can get it to run. Okay, um, okay. We're I'll do a little bit of a quick catch up on the truck camper. I was waiting for some folks to come in. So, um, oh, CO monitor, carbon monoxide, but same thing. Yeah, a lot of people confuse carbon dioxide with carbon monoxide. Uh, but yeah, carbon monoxide is the bad one. CO. Uh, so the truck camper. Um, the way it's going to work is that it's going to be probably a three to four week delay. There'll be a video on Sunday nights at seven. It might not be every Sunday night because I've got projects I'm doing on Rusty as well. I'll be doing some flooring work. I'm going to be doing some other things that I will be shooting video on. And I'll be mixing those in with the truck camper videos as we go along. I anticipate that I'm probably going to be spring, realistically, uh, as late as it already is in the year, uh, but it's probably going to be spring realistically before I get the truck camper on the road. And so I started to do some removal of the windows. And i got to get over here and I'll flip you over and let you see a little shot of the front end of the truck camper uh, tore apart. Just one second. Let me get over here. And I thought I had this ready to go. Okay, now I do. Now I come over here and I can do this. Alright, so that'll catch up. Okay, so there's the before and there's the after. This is just raw footage. I haven't edited this yet. This is stuff I shot on Saturday. So I'm going to pause it there. These corners, this corner here and the corner over here, uh, were pretty rotten. And as you can see, there's been a lot of water standing in here. And it's probably been in here a long time. It looks like part of this wall is rotten, at least to here, to where the bottom of this window was. Okay, I'll bring you back here to the before. So this area in here is pretty rotten. I don't know how far back it extends. I still have to pull this window, this window, and these covers, and this cover, and light, and stuff, so I can peel the aluminum back to see just how far back the damage goes. Um, as far as I can tell, just by pushing on the, uh, you know, on the siding, uh, it doesn't look like it's, uh, it doesn't feel like it's too soft. So I'm hopeful. But yeah, there's quite a bit of water damage there. Let's come back over here. Uh, these boards are completely rotten. You can see these two by twos that support the bed, the overhead here in the bed, are rotten clear back to where I peeled the aluminum, aluminum back and a little bit further. Okay, so I'm going to have to rebuild all this. I know the first thing that everybody looks at, and I thought of, I thought it at first uh, when I first uh, got it tore apart, is man, that's going to be a hell of a lot of work. But actually, it's not. Um, there's only about six pieces of lumber I'm going to need, some plywood, uh, some stick lumber, it looks like a couple two by twos, you know, ten two by twos, some two by fours, maybe a two by six, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, a couple sheets of plywood and we should be in good shape. But I do suspect some damage. I should flip you back over here uh, and I don't think I can, well I can kind of show you here on this photo here. Is I suspect that this corner back here is also leaking. It is separated up here, and I don't. Ha I do have video of it. I just don't have it handy. 
but it is separated up here a little bit. And in fact, if you look at the camper here, you can see that this area through here is waffled a little bit and there's some screws in here, kind of up here where I'm circling. And so I'm pretty sure this corner's leaking. And that would explain, as you saw in the uh, outside tour video I did on Sunday, uh, why this compartment here looked like it had been wet. Um, you could see in there that um, it had uh, um, the equipment, the chain and that, uh, uh, I think there was a shovel in there, but that stuff had all rusted. And so that tells me if there's been moisture in that container. So I'm expecting to find water damage back in that corner. Um, but I don't think it's really bad because again, you know, I've been banging on it, pounding on it, pushing on it, trying to decide if it's really soft and if it feels spongy then it may be, you know, there may be a problem there. But, you know, it's going to be a good opportunity to upgrade the insulation. I'll be able to go with the uh, one-inch uh, polyisocyanurate foam, which actually has a lot better R value than just uh, our uh, regular fiberglass insulation like they use. And uh, so, yeah, it looks like a lot of trouble, and it is a fair amount of damage, but no big deal. Uh, I think I can get her handled. Let's flip it over here to the chat window and see. By the way, um, cheap, quick commercial time. Uh, drop a note over in the uh, comment window, uh, the chat window, about where you're watching from or ask any kind of an RV-related question. I'm happy to try to help you. And if I can't, I will go and research it. You can support the channel by visiting my Amazon store. There's a link in the description below. Also, my website has tons of information available on it around RVing, as well as my other interests, photography and stuff like that. So, uh, trbullen.com, run over there and take a look around. And, of course, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, do all those things. Super helpful. Helps get the video up on uh, YouTube's uh, radar and other people get to see it, and that's always very helpful. So, thanks a lot for that. Um, back to the comments. Okay, yeah, Tom, I figured need. Uh, okay, so uh, Ron Lee has um, his, 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 we're talking about his fridge. It's on the wall, not the slide. I have a 2000 new for Newmar Mountaineer uh, diesel pusher. Beautiful rigs. So um, get up on the roof, remove the top, the cover of the fridge vent and make sure it's not plugged up all right because airflow through those is really important and if for some reason let's say you had a wasp nest in just the right place it could cause pressure to actually build up in there because of the way the air would suck around it that's it's a you know it's aerodynamics and stuff okay that's the first thing um then as far as the fan goes is that fan pushing air through or sucking air out because it needs to push air through the the part that needs to be cooled the most important part of that of those any condensing fridge like a absorption fridge ammonia fridge like most well like our, our most all RVs have if it's a dual fuel it's going to be a condensing or ammonia type based fridge the top is where that ammonia condenses back down into liquid and that's what makes it cool and cause the fridge to you know to chill and so if that's not cooling at the top um, uh, you know uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words if it's not cooling properly then it's your fridge is going to get warm and as you're rolling down the road it could be that for whatever reason the air is not moving up and through the fridge um, so yeah that fan should be blowing air through the compartment and then you want to make sure that the roof vent is um, not plugged in any way shape or form it needs to be open and and you know uh, wasps and all kinds of things can get up in there they won't get down inside because there's a very fine mesh uh, steel mesh cover on the roof vent that protects that protects it from insects maybe but um, yeah those things I would be looking at Jet, great to have you in tonight. You are not interrupting. I am well, and I hope you are as well. 
Uh, George, a.k.a. Dad, says, uh, well, they have used the Good Sam Extended Service Plan on their 2004 Newmar Dutch Star since purchasing it in 2017. 319 per month. We have Good Sam Roadside and credit card also. I Like I say, I had Good Sam Roadside, and I will. I still have Good Sam Roadside, and I'll keep it um, because it's just been good. You know, every roadside service, here's the thing with about roadside service. They're going to get to you when they can get to you. If you're in a Class A, they got to send a big-ass wrecker out for you, and that means time. I remember when I broke down Camp Verde, 2018, on my way south for winter, I waited a day and a half to get a wrecker. Now, I was lucky. I got off the interstate. If I'd have been on the interstate, it would have been a different story. I'd have been a little bit more persistent uh, about getting somebody out there. But what they had is they had some big wreck south of Camp uh, Camp Verde there on uh, I-9, I-9, uh, 17, I-17, and they had like every wrecker for 100 miles down there working it. And uh, George A.K.A. Dad says he's had pretty good luck with all the products. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, Ron Brunch. Hi, Ron. Great to have you in. Has it come up with the current high cost of diesel that people should look into a TSD logistics fuel card? Save big time with it. Yes. Uh, we have not chatted about TSD. Well, we did maybe uh, early this spring, late spring, early summer, but we haven't. And what TSD is, for those that don't know, is it's a fuel co-op of individuals that get together and then they bargain with these truck stops, the loves, the pilots. I think TSD is loves, not pilot, but correct me if I'm wrong, but wrong, wrong, Ron. That's hard to say twice, three times. Um, but it, so it's like a co-op. And so they gather people to gather into this co-op and then they go and they can negotiate prices with this, with the company. Okay, let's say loves in the particular case of TSD. And they say, you know, well, our TSD users will buy their fuel from you exclusively if you give them a discount. And it's anywhere from like 40 to 60 or so cents a gallon, which can be pretty significant when you're buying 150 gallons worth of fuel. So um, I didn't drive enough miles to worry about it for mine. Uh, if I'd have been, I wish they would have had something like that in 2013 when I was 1099ing and I was traveling across the country quite a bit. Uh, and fuel was four plus dollars a gallon. So, you know, when you buy eight hundred dollars worth of fuel, you know, it you know, it'll set you down in your chair and make you think twice. But with that said, uh yeah, those T S D cards are definitely worth looking into. Um George AKA Dad says, One of the advantages of tin sided RVs is you can easily peel back the tin, rebuild the damage, and reapply the tin. Yeah. You can do it with a phylon too. The phylon is the fiberglass panels that, like Rusty, my RV, all the new Mars are all built with phylon. Anything that's smooth doesn't have kind of the corrugated metal outside or typically phylon or fiberglass panels. And they can be relaminated, but it's tricky. Um, uh, it's tricky, for sure. And yeah, the metal ones are easier to get apart. Alrighty, let's see. Yeah, TSD. Okay, the first fifth wheel, uh, Georgia K. A. Dad says, first fifth wheel we had, I removed the entire back wall and rebuilt the framing. It came out real well. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to have to rebuild the framing from the bottom of the windows down and probably back, uh, well, until the wood's quit, you know, until the wood's not rotten, uh, for the underside of the front. And uh, you know, let's flip back over here to that real quick. I still have that up on the monitor so we can chat about that. So yeah, I'm going to have to rebuild all of this, okay, from here down. This piece was fine, but I'm probably going to rebuild this corner and then all the way back in here until wherever the wood ends up being good. I'm probably going to have to replace all the framing. Uh, I have plans to work on getting the rest of this uh, tin pulled off and getting these windows out here within the next couple days. So I'll probably be able to chat more about what I found next week uh, on next week's live stream. Uh, remember, the premiere video that's coming out this Sunday will be the interior tour. And I will say, the interior is great. You know, it's in fine shape. Uh, the fabrics are reasonably in good shape. You know, they're not, 
I mean, it's 27 years old, uh, but the colors agree with me. Um, I may paint it. Uh, to be honest with you, I'll probably paint the inside. I like the cabinets, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I just got a new shower head, the Oxygenics. Uh, I had one of those in Rusty and my old RV, and I loved it. It's the best shower head, man. You get a great shower. It uses very little water. It's very uh, water efficient. And so, yeah, the Oxygenics is available in my Amazon store under handy items, handy items for RV owners. There's a link in the description below. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. There is not, what you can do, Tom, though, is you can email me pictures, trbolin at gmail.com, and if they come in before the end of the stream, then I can uh, pop them up and share them. We did that with, uh, oh, there was somebody a couple, three or four streams ago that sent me some photos we were able to pop up and look at and talk about uh, on the live stream. So, yeah, that's absolutely easy to do, trbolin at gmail.com. Oh, Ron Lee on his fridge. It pulls through. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more research on that for you, Ron. How old is your rig, uh, Ron? How old is your uh, RV? And I'm assuming it cools okay when you're running on electric. Here's the thing about fridge repairs and fridge diagnosing. Keep in mind that if you make a change on your absorption fridge, and that's any absorption fridge, not just the Northcold 1200s, but any of the absorption, ammonia-based, if you have a dual fuel electric and propane fridge in your RV, it takes 12 to 24 hours before a change will manifest itself. They were, they're really slow. It's not like a compressor, or a compressor home style fridge where if you turn the temperature down, usually within a couple hours, it goes from 46 to 42 degrees. Your RV fridge is not gonna do that. It's gonna take 12 to 24 hours. That's why they tell you that you should start your fridge a day before you plan to go out on tour before you you know decide you're going to go out if you have a dual fuel and you're going to be running on propane and electric the best practice is to uh, start that fridge a day early that gives it plenty of time to cool off uh, Tom Downey says our 2002 Dodge diesel gave us 22 miles per gallon for 157,000 miles no problems 13 piles Always do the diesel power. Yeah. Um, I'm Like I say, if I can get a diesel, it's hard to justify 10000 bucks for a diesel versus a gasser. But sometimes it's definitely worth it. Um, you know, what's, what's making me think that is I'll probably be uh, lugging with me around 3,000 pounds, 28, 2900. The dry weight of the camper full of water, full of propane, with the fridge you know, reasonably full, is 2450 and I'm figuring you know four or five six hundred pounds worth of personal effects tools clothing rocks probably <laughs> stuff like that uh, so yeah three-quarter ton or one ton is what I'm looking for and Tom that was kind of the way I felt about it too you know they didn't buy it you don't buy enough fuel to pay uh, for the TSD card in yeah, I kind of feel like that, too. Hi, Lola Ranch. It's great to have you in. You have a fifth wheel. Nose, bedroom, carpet. Um, can you expand on that? Is that noise? FG says, hey, hey, how's it going? I'm having the same problem with your fridge. Yeah, okay. Tom Downey, old camper restoring equals glutton for punishment. Yeah, well, don't ever let it be said that I have poor judgment. 
FG says I'll have to watch it from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I know you have, Tom. That's why I uh, take it with a grain of salt as it was intended. Oh, and Ron Lee says he is a 2004. Oh, okay. And it's good on AC. Okay. Um, yeah, I think... Yeah, um... There's, you, you need to check the air path. You need to make sure that that path is clear. And then you may have to get a little bigger fan. Um, you know, I actually had, what I actually used and is, a, is an 8-inch computer fan. Okay? And you can get them online. The, there's not one of those in my Amazon store. But you could go to my Amazon store and then go find one and support the channel that way. But I had an 8-inch fan that moved... 500 CFM and then I had I bought a little thermostat uh, for about six bucks and what I did was I took that thermostat and I JB welded it to the uh, casing around the boiler so in those absorption fridges there's going to be a boiler where the gas burns you should be able to see the gas flame and I just uh, JB welded it to that cover and the reason I did that was is because when it would get over 100 degrees Celsius, that thermostat would turn on, would close, and the fan would start. And that way I didn't have to sit and listen to that fan all the time. Um, and keep in mind, as I mentioned, you know, it takes a long time to recover from these bumps in temperature. So if you gain three or four or five degrees as you're rolling down the road, you may not get back to being, you know, 42 degrees or 39, whatever your desired set point is, by the tick, next time is time to drive. And so you get into this really wicked cycle of you never really get it cold again, then it warms back up and it warms back up and it keeps getting warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer. And yeah, um, older, those older fridges start to lose their efficiency too. So they don't work as well. The boilers get corrosion inside the pipes get corrosion inside the gas doesn't move as well as it did the day it was new um, and so yeah airflow is the key on those uh, fridges Groovejack says taking mechanics a program is on war factories Henry Ford's plan to build a giant factory in Michigan 3.5 million square feet yeah, you know, and that's actually kind of a small factory now. The gigafactory that uh, they built for lithium batteries out there in Nevada isn't that, like, 10 acres under roof? That'd be 44.5 million square feet under roof, approximately, 4.56, technically. Uh, interesting. Um, I don't know, Tom. I looked at the numbers really carefully, and if you go by the published carrying capacities on a three-quarter ton, either the Fords or the Chevys, um, you know, they, they say 2,800 to 30, and they give you a range, right? So 28 to 32. Now, you can add some springs. You could add a leaf to the spring pack. If you're on a three-quarter ton, you could do some better shocks. And so if I end up with a three-quarter ton, I would beef the suspension up a little bit. If I get a one ton, bing, bing, boom, I'm good. I wouldn't have to do much. The problem, as I mentioned, is that there's just not a lot of long beds out there. Alrighty, let's see. FG wants to know if anybody's in California. Do we have anybody in California? Uh, FG says, I pull my 99 Catalina 30-foot fifth wheel with a 99 Dodge Ram 1500 with no problems. Definitely not a one-ton or dually. Yeah. Yeah, those uh, up to 32 feet on a fifth wheel, provided you're not carrying your whole house on your back, yeah, you could probably get by with a half ton. You know, um, another YouTube channel I watch, I've given a lot of free shout-outs tonight, not that it makes any difference, is... Uh, Jeez, it had to run on the tip of my tongue, too. That's what happens when you get gray hair. It sucks all your brain cells right out. Uh, no ordinary path. Uh, he's a traveling nurse. She is a stay-at-home mom. They travel with three kids and a dog full-time. They just came back from Alaska. They get around, and they're kind of a fun couple to watch. Uh, they have a 
you know, a pretty decent channel. Uh, he travel travels around uh, the country doing nursing contracts. So, no ordinary journey. Yeah, no ordinary life. No ordinary life. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And they pull the 32 footer with a half ton. Hello, Jim Bertrand. It's great to have you in Blizzard in Western Saskatchewan today. Yeah. Um, no blizzards here. Uh, just very, very windy. They said that we might get a few sprinkles tomorrow. I believe that's what the weatherman did, misforecasted. You know, one of my favorite things is is that, you know, they tell you that they have a 10% chance of rain the night before, and you go out in the morning, it's raining in buckets, and you have to think to yourself, if that's 10%, I'd hate to see 100. No, no rain here, nothing. Maybe a little sprinkle Friday night. Just cold. So... Bob Davis, greetings. Great to have you in. He says he's late to the party. Barbecue waits for one. <laughs> Good source for brighter LED lights. George, or excuse me, Bob. It's funny you would mention that. I've been working on a sponsorship deal for some RV lights for the truck camper. And we just finished it up tonight. If you can wait until I can get these lights in, I might be able to give you a really good recommendation. Uh, otherwise, if you go to my channel, there is three or four videos around LED ceiling lights or LED lights. If you go to my channel and just do a search uh, from my channel, LED lights, you'll see that uh, I used um, a set from if you're in a hurry, Olive Echo uh, in Rusty the RV. I put up eight of them. I loved them. They were great. Uh, very easy. They've been solid. They were dimmable. And I was really happy with them. So Olive Echo, um, well, I could pull one off here and show you because I actually had one spare. I actually guess I only put in seven. But I'm using one of them here uh, as a desktop lamp over here on my work on my workbench, on my tinkerer bench. So... But I, I don't have all the details just yet on these other lights, but they're LED, they're built for RVs, boats, you know, van life, that kind of stuff. Um, just finishing up the details with them. So here in the next uh, two or three weeks, I should be able to uh, give you a pretty good idea on what I think of the lights that I'm getting for the truck camper rebuild. But yeah, the Aloe Echoes were good. Oh, Bob Davis is, there's your answer, FG. Bob Davis is in NorCal. <clears throat> Lola Ranch is, Ranch is having uh, laptop issues. Sorry, Lola. Jim Murphy, thank you. Uh, Tom Downey, do I want to build a truck? Well, no. Um, the, no. No. <laughs> Uh, I used to love mechanic and I used to love wrenching, but anymore you got to have these expensive specialty tools and analyzers and all that junk. And you know, I'd, I'll do my own maintenance and oil changes and stuff like that. Um, uh, but I generally take my rig to the shop. Uh, I guess other, well, I guess that's not true either because, you know, on the Ford that you see that uh, camper sitting on in the uh, first image that I shared with you uh, just a few moments ago, um, here, I'll show you that. Um, that Ford there, uh, I bought on auction uh, for $1,200 because it needed a clutch. And I put the clutch in it and I probably had, oh, I might have had four. Three hundred fifty dollars into the clutch, and then I changed the um, rear main seal because uh, it had a little leak. Uh, those sorts of things. So uh, yeah, I might have put six hundred in it, maybe seven hundred. Um, you know, with wipers and stuff like that. And uh, I had actually put it up for sale uh, late this early summer. I guess it was really. Uh, and I had put the for sale, I just put a for sale sign in the back of it and, uh, and, and I had it parked out in front of the house. <laughs> and I probably, 
and then promptly uh, left for Arkansas for 16 weeks to help out my dad. <laughs> I could have sold it 10 times. <coughs> could have sold <laughs> Chokes me up. I could have sold it 10 times over. For $3,000 or more. So, but as far as building one, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, Lola uh, Ranch uh, offered me an older Dodge, a 2001 with the Cummins and those sorts of things. Um, but uh, yeah, I just don't want to get an older rig. I want something that's a little newer, mostly because like a lot of the new, the first and second generation diesels, now, not the 7.3 Power Stroke. I had one of those in a one-ton Ford with a short bed uh, back in the you know 2000. It was actually a 2000, and I loved it. But, um, yeah, uh, it's just the repair costs of those first and second generation diesels. You know, we spoke about Dur Duramaxes uh, two weeks ago when I was first t chatting about the... the uh, auction because there was a pickup that was hauling this truck camper around it was a three-quarter ton chevy it might have been a gmc it had the duramax uh l l o I had the first generation duramax and that pushed me away plus it had two uh, injectors bad so anyway uh, Jim says, air shocks on rear. TR, I built a fleet of 2500 HD Chevy 4x4 work trucks with the GVWR of 9900 Timbrans on front axles. Okay. Good to know. 9900 pounds. Yeah, I have to watch it. Apparently, and maybe this is just the state wanting more money from people, and it could be. But when I went over to register the Ford, they were very insistent that, that the license plate that I had was only good for 8,000 GBW. Um, and I think they're just wanting to sell truck plates for more money, personally. But I've heard of a couple of times that they've had uh, check stations on popular routes, and they've been pulling rigs off the road. Every rig that's towing anything, pickup, semi, whatever, and weighing them all, and if you're over your licensed GVW truck and trailer, they're writing tickets. So I don't know if I want to, I don't know. I think maybe that's just, you know, maybe that they're just wanting to get more money for road taxes. I don't, that's probably what it is. Um, but I'm going to make a note of that. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jim, FG. I pulled some weight for sure. Even have my twin Hibusa custom street bikes on board. Still just fine. Yeah, cool. That's excellent. Okay, Bob, good to know. Uh, stay tuned, and I know you will. You've been around for a long time, and I really appreciate you guys. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, I'll have more news on that uh, probably within the next couple, two to three weeks. Okay, so uh, Tom Downey, uh, then build the right truck. Yeah, I, you know, like I say, I, I could do it. I definitely have the skills. I don't have the tools. I used to have the tools. But when I downsized, I got rid of a lot of tools, which is probably uh, a mistake. FG says, hey, Bob NorCal here too. Know any good uh, places near the summits that's not in the snow? to get one last trip in this year. All right. Uh, bulletproof the engine. Yeah, Tom, uh, you know, Ford, uh, the, the, what is it, the six liters? Was it the six or the six sixes? I don't know. I remember. It, it was the engine that came out for the seven, three Fords, the Power Stroke. And man, they had all kinds of trouble with it. And yeah, you had to bulletproof them, but that cost $6,000. Then if you figure out that you paid 10,000 bucks more for that in advance, you're into that engine for sixteen thousand dollars. That's half the cost of the truck. So, uh, like I say, I tend to lean more towards gassers. I think they're a little less expensive, 
they don't have expensive turbos and turbo you know fuel injectors and those sorts of things that break down uh, I mean not the gassers don't break don't get me wrong I'm not saying that they don't that's a piece of equipment it's a machine and machines break that's the first thing you got to know about owning any kind of equipment uh, is it will fail you at the most inopportune time I seem to be pretty pessimistic tonight don't I <laughs> Um, Richard needs to find a toad. Uh, Richard wants to buy my Subaru. Um, he's the guy. Richard is the fellow that bought Rusty. And uh, he wants the Subaru, too. I don't know if I want to sell the Subaru. I, you know, yeah, I could go buy a new truck then, right? And I'd sell that Subaru, take the money I was going to buy the truck with, and, you know, I'd have more money to go buy maybe a new truck. Uh, buy one off, you know, pick one off and have it, uh, you know, build and order and sent to me. Um, I just can't convince myself to get rid of that uh, Subaru. It's such a great little ride. Bob, Bob Davis says he doesn't, he's not a snow fan. <laughs> Nothing as far as snow here anywhere within 400 miles of Humboldt. So it sounds like you got some good stuff going up north, way up north. Lola. Okay, hi, Lola. Great. Fifth wheel bedroom floor is very cold and draft coming from under the bed. Insulate the basement ceiling and under the head part of the bed. What kind of insulation for the bedroom is best? If it's inside the bedroom, like you're going to insulate in underneath the bed and stuff, use the foam, the poly iso foam. Uh, it's that purple foam you get from Home Depot. Do not use insulation that's not enclosed, that is not in enclosed space. You don't want that insulation flying around. And that foam won't break down. Uh, and then carpeting the floor will definitely help with the cold uh, of the floor. Um, but yeah, you can use that foam. Um, foamular, I believe is what it's called. And... Uh, uh, actually, I think you watched the fridge install video with me when I did the re premiere. And it's that same purple foam I used to fill the vent holes uh, when I took the old fridge out. Uh, okay, FG responding back to Bob. FG saying six the 604s were ghost garbage. Yeah, exactly. FG said Ford had to find a motor last minute, otherwise production would have stopped. So 60 came out of Russia someplace before they found the 73. True. How about an F450 chassis camper mount? We know you want the space. Yeah, if I had a 10, 10 and a half foot camper, a 450 might be all right. But see, a 450 is getting you into the dualies, and I don't want a dually. Okay. Uh, in fact, I don't think this camper. Uh, I don't think it would work with a dually. In fact, I'm almost positive it wouldn't. Let's flip back over and let's just take a quick look because the way the, the jack system is on that, let me jump over here and bring you guys back up over here. The way the jacks are on that, those duallys would be right there where that jack, where this electric jack piece is right here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. You couldn't haul a dually uh, with this type of, uh, lift system and uh, by the way uh, if you want to know more about that stay bill lift jacks uh, they are still being made in Kalispell Montana and uh, some parts available I've already called to look for parts I needed one little piece of screw rod for a stabilizer and some stuff like that and they're still out there but in approximately three weeks I'll be doing a video uh, where I'm repairing that you might you might remember in the uh, premiere video that I mentioned that the switches for the electric jacks had failed on me and I had to uh, jury rig uh, to get the jacks uh, you know to work on the thing because the switches had failed well I've since now rebuilt those I cleaned them all up and took them apart rebuilt them and I've got a video coming out on that and that will be in about three weeks uh, you'll get a to full tour and how the whole system works and everything. Um, it's a pretty good little setup. And they call it stable lift for a reason. It, it lifts this thing way up, gets it out of the camper, no problem. You drive off, you bring it back down, and then there's two little struts. And when you get the struts up, it's stable. It is really stable. I am really impressed.
<laughs> George, you're right. Absolutely right. Uh, George uh, responds back to Lola. The best insulation is a few tanks of gas to drive south. Absolutely true. But Lola is, uh, she's on uh, permanent founder. Well, she's permanent at where she's at in Colorado. Uh, so, yeah, she, uh, she has to uh, um, make do with uh, getting by with some insulation and uh, uh, probably a space heater or two. Tom Downey changed the lift. No, probably not. You know how much those lift jacks are? To get a set of four electric lift jacks for that, you're looking at sixteen, eighteen hundred bucks. That's what I paid almost what I paid for the well, I don't want to give it away because <laughs> anyway, that's almost what I paid for it. Uh, would be the cost of a new jack system. So yeah, I don't think I'll be changing out the lift. Okay, well, any more questions or comments? Look at that. We're right at 8 o'clock, and I think we'll probably be wrapping things up here in a bit, unless there are other questions or comments that come in. Let me clean up the real estate here so I can see what's going on. All right, well, we got Thanksgiving coming up here in a couple of weeks, so I hope everybody has some nice Thanksgiving plans. I know that <clears throat> I'll be staying here and having uh, Thanksgiving with some close friends. Uh, Jim Bertrand uh, says, pretty sure the Dooley will work with my camper. Truck width's available online. But for Dooley, you are now into a one-ton expensive rig to motor around in. Yes, exactly. I just personally don't like the looks of the Dooley. You know, yeah, it gives you more carrying capacity. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really, I've never really cared for the looks of the Dooleys. You know, the old, the old Chevys with the step side beds. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, the late 60s, those stepside Chevys and GMs, the Ford stepsides were really cool looking. But yeah, I've never been a huge fan of the Dooleys. All right. Well, I guess we'll call it good. I'll see you guys next Tuesday night. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up if you haven't already. Appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. Visit my Amazon store if you'd like to support the channel. Drop a comment. Just visit my website, and I will catch you guys next Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Until then, peace. Good night.